Right. Pleasure to welcome back to the uh, program Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky. Uh, the, I almost, uh, I, I guess I should say the man of the hour. When I look at all these different uh, headlines lately uh, that you've been in, here's one from Brian Dickerson. Shirky can fortify process or fan the flames of chaos. That one was a while ago. I've been carrying that around for a while. Uh, Shirky issued a statement in response to governor's latest order. Uh, you, you, you're everywhere on this thing. And, uh, uh, and sadly, and unfortunately, and I think incorrectly, also uh, part of the blame, if you listen to uh, Governor Whitmer and Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, for the whole uh, kidnap thing. I, I, don't, I haven't talked to you, I think, since they were lambasting the, quote, Republican leadership in Michigan. Uh, Mike, good morning. Good uh, cup of Joe Dosa Paul morning to you, sir. And yes, that's a very sad thing that uh, I wasn't necessarily overly surprised that our governor uh, pulled that antic. Uh, but I was really surprised to see our lieutenant governor get drugged down to that level. He knows better. Uh, in fact, he was there witnessing the day in which I went up into the gallery when there were a bunch of uh, open, long gun, open carry folks to just calm things down. The, the uh, section. Senate Secretary and the Senate Police both thanked me for helping de-escalate what was what was a very uh, a high motion day in the Capitol. And then, uh, subsequent to that, I have met with a few did meet with a few of the uh, militia folks to ask them about their code of conduct and see if they had one, and challenging them to you know try to hold themselves accountable. Uh, but yet those two things are being characterized as aiding and abetting, I suppose. And it's just a, it's just a sad thing to stoop to those levels and then go on national TV and ride the circuit and continue to propagate that, that uh, untruth, frankly, lies. Well, I, I, I don't know that you had a chance, but if you get a chance, go online. The, the online version of yesterday's column for me in the Detroit News said what I said the way I said it, whereas they had to edit the one that ran in the actual paper, newspaper. Uh, so if you could go online, DetroitNews.com, you'll see that I reacted not well to this opportunity for the governor and the lieutenant governor to praise the tremendous police work that went into saving her and protecting her. And let's face it, the FBI, the state police, the fine Michigan State Police, all the other Agencies that were involved have had a rough time to go in this country by people not speaking up on their behalf, especially politicians, uh, for even considering cutting their budgets or defunding the police or whatever. Would have been a perfect time nationwide to give kudos and thanks. And within seconds of their quick little uh, uh, thank you, they went into blame. And, uh, and you were a part of that blame. The president was a part of that blame, et cetera, et cetera. It became politicized. Meanwhile, you and your compatriots were not politicizing what the governor did. You were blowing a whistle and crying foul. And the Michigan Supreme Court has agreed with you. Yep, the Michigan Supreme Court put a final button into the balloon there yesterday with regards to our lawsuits and claims that the governor overreached and broke the law on April 30th and continued to uh, issue executive orders unlawfully. So now we're in the process of uh, putting the pieces back together. Uh, We've been working, our staffs have been working the last two weekends, basically around the clock, uh, evaluating the orders that were issued, which ones need to die, which ones need to work, and which ones need to be put into, into statute to protect the people of Michigan. We're going to have a meeting in session today with our friends in the House, and we will be codifying a number of, of those executive orders and uh, have been working with the governor's staff. And the staff, her staff has been uh, doing a pretty good job of working with us to uh, put this together. Haven't yet had a conversation with our governor yet, uh, but I'm hoping that comes soon. She's been very busy. Um, so uh, my tongue was kind of planted in my yeah, cheek I on that, that one. but. I got that. Yes, yeah, I, um, I, I I don't begrudge her uh, wanting a job in the if if the Harris Biden administration gets in. I do not begrudge somebody who'd like to work for uh, for a presidential administration. It's a big deal, I know, but uh, I I don't know what she's going to do if that doesn't happen. But be that as it may, we'll put that aside. The Mr. Gordon of the Health Department. I, I, it's hard to argue 
that he might not be doing all the right things that need to be done during the pandemic and now the rise in the problems with the pandemic. So you wonder how effective all these rules have been if we are now back on the rise with the second wave. But there's not a lot you can do about that. If the if the health department says we should wear masks and we shouldn't gather in large groups, are you going to fight that? Well, we're not going to fight the specifics of the orders. We're going to we're going to challenge the notion that the orders actually fall within the public health code. This administration, Paul, has a record going back to early 2019, testing the limits of laws. You'll recall that our governor tried to declare a state of emergency, a state of emergency over vaping. Now, I was never a big vaping fan, and I don't like kids having access to it, but it wasn't a statewide emergency. This is another example. Now she's trying to uh, implement her executive orders uh, through a public health code in a twisted interpretation of that code, and it won't surprise me that sometime within the next few days there'll be a number of lawsuits filed because she's they she and they are... Uh, basically going outside the bounds of the statute. So it's, uh, unfortunately, this is frictional loss in government that we don't need. We should be all focused on the same things. We can have differences of opinions on how to execute those things, but we certainly should be able to focus on what's important. And yet here we are again having to uh, call into call into question and check the power of the executive office through the departments because they're, again, uh, implementing things that are outside, outside statute, frankly. Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky, I know you've got to go. Any quick thing you want to say about your backlash on the herd immunity comment? Oh, certainly. I'd, be, I'd love to talk about it for a long time, but I've got another radio interview. Let's do it. it, it Let's do it, it next time. Bit. Yes, but it's a bit, a small piece of a comprehensive plan, and I'd love to have a conversation with you at that, sir. We'll do that when you have some more time.